Good evening, friends. Uh, we are in Romans 8, looking at the greatness of the salvation that we have, the comfort that we've received in the knowledge that our God is sovereign over all things, that our God saves us, and that our salvation is secure because we are, uh, our salvation is rooted not in who we are and what we have done, but in our God himself, who foreloved us in all of eternity and predestined us to be conformed to the image of his Son. And he called us in history to himself through the preaching of the gospel and the work of the Holy Spirit so that we turn from our sin to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Christ, God credits to us all of the righteousness of Christ, and he forgives all of our sins. We are justified, declared righteous because of faith in Christ alone. And then we have the security that our salvation will last forever. We are already now rejoicing in our glorification. Our future is already now past. We are glorified. And now the Apostle Paul is going to bring all of that and he's going to say, what does this mean for your life? Now let's see, because he brings this out in five questions, and today we're going to come and spend some time with the first of these questions. So I'm going to start reading for us again in Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, for love, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these, th to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What then shall we say to these things? In light of God's sovereignty over all our lives and working in the lives of those whom he called, those who love him, because he loved them first. What's the meaning of all these things? What's the implication? What's the implication of the security of our salvation? Paul says, here's the first thing. It gives you incredible confidence to face whatever, ever hardships, difficulties, enemies, complications, illness, sickness, disease, hardship, bitterness, the evil one himself. If God is for us, who, who can be against us? Paul is asking these rhetorical questions that bring home for us the reality of God's work that changes all of life. Now, the question, who can be against us, seem to be, uh, 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 if, if that's the only question Paul asks, we would say, 
almost everything. The world, the, the rebellious world, the sinful world, the secular world, with its morality and its opposition to, to Christ and to his word. It is, it is against us, isn't it? We feel its pressure, and it seems that we're living in a time where opposition to Christ and to his word and to the morals of uh, the scriptures are rising. So you must be joking to ask who can be against us. Obviously, the sinful world is against us. They've persecuted the church. They still do. Think of our brothers and sisters living in, 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 in countries, Muslim countries, or, or uh, 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 China and, 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 and other parts of the world where, where religious oppression is government policy or outworking of the antagonism to burn churches and to kill believers. Of course, they face opposition from the world. But not only the world, our own sin, indwelling sin, the sin that remains within us. It fights against us. It militates against what God demands. Paul in Romans 7 it uh, talks about that the good I want to do, I do not do, but the evil I do not want to do, I keep on doing. I am struggling with sin that remains. And it's a powerful adversary, isn't it? And what about death itself? The Bible calls it the last enemy. The last enemy that will be destroyed. Death is against us. Death ruins the life God has created and given us. And now, with especially this pandemic and the, the way in which it is, is, is ransacking the world, reminds us of how short our lives are here. Death is coming. But he who has the power of death the evil one himself, the devil and all of his angels, the host that is in rebellion against God is at work in this world. The Bible leaves us in no doubt that the warfare we fight is not a warfare we can win in ourselves, in our own strength. Paul tells us in Ephesians 6 that the, the warfare we fight is with the principalities and the dark forces of the air. So you must be joking when you say, who is against us? Almost everyone is against us. Almost everything is against us. We are against ourselves. And yet, now, in light of what Paul has said, of our salvation that is rooted in God, that began in eternity past and will last to eternity future, and the sovereign power of God that overrules all the evil that still remains in this world, Paul comes and he draws the line and he says, if you put all your enemies on one side, the world and all its oppressive force that arrays itself against Christ and his church, the, the presence of sin that still remains and mars the lives of everyone who confessed the name of Christ, the, 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 the devil and all of his host and death itself, put it all on this side, on this side of the scale. And then you put God on our side. 
And what do you see? You see that the scales will always tip. God will always win. If God is on your side, if God is for us, who can be against us? The answer is no one. Now think about it. The world and its rebellion against God, that's going to end when Christ comes again and makes all things new. The indwelling sin with which we wrestle, that is going to end because Christ has triumphed over sin and death. He walked out of the grave and the fact that Christ walked out of the grave is a reminder to us that the future, the future that God declares is coming, in which there will be a new heavens and a new earth where sin will be banished forever. And all the, the sickness and illness that sin has brought will be removed. Is already present because Christ has risen. Christ's resurrection is the beginning of that new, restored, remade world without sin. And in the cross, Christ destroyed the hold of the evil one in our sin. And through his resurrection, he broke his power over death itself. And so Paul knows that our salvation is absolutely secure. From eternity, foreknown, foreloved, predestined, in time called and justified, and now we know the future, we will be glorified. It's all perfectly secure. What confidence is that? It's the confidence that belongs to those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That if you today rest all of your salvation, all of your hope, all of your confidence, not in yourself, not in the church and what the church is, but in him who is the head of the church. In him who humbled himself and became a man and went to the cross, if you put your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ and you see that he died in your place, condemned, but that he rose and you rose with him, then you can now say, with the Apostle Paul, if God is for me, who can be against me? The us there is the us of those who believe in Christ. We see the psalmist David in Psalm 27 express the same kind of confidence. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war arise against me, yet I will be confident. When God is on our side, we truly have nothing to fear. Take confidence that through Christ, God has become on our side and our protector. What a saviour, what a God we have. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for the confidence we can have in the face of all the trials and difficulties here, that with you on our side, we have nothing to fear. No one 
can oppose, ruin, undo your work or sever us from your presence. You are for us and therefore we have nothing and no one to fear. For that we praise and magnify you. Give us to know that, to rest in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.